Hey everybody, um, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. Um, it's really, really great to have you here. This is the first in a series we'll be having. Um, the topic we're going to be considering today is what are casting directors really looking for? Um, and I'm so pleased and so excited to have a very special guest with us today. Um, her name is Hannah and she is the director of Lane Casting UK. Um, so we're going to be asking Hannah some tough questions today. Um, so that we can learn more about the industry um, and what's expected of us or you know as creatives um so to kind of kick off then hannah um you sent me over a beautiful beautiful bio um mm -hmm. and I just loved kind of reading about your journey and how you you know got to where you are now um it'd be really great if you could kind of take us through that and kind of yeah how hannah became the director um, of lane casting uk Thank you so much. Very happy to be here. Obviously, like contacts number one fan mm -hmm. as well. So it's great to to be here with you guys and uh, hopefully help with any questions people might have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I was really lucky, to be honest, um, because the casting industry traditionally is very very closed. It's very close to younger people. It's very close to people of different backgrounds. Um, and so I went into the casting industry in a very kind of backward way, but it worked. Um, I, I studied drama at uni. I thought I wanted to be an actress. Like a lot of casting directors are failed actors, guys. It's really true. They don't like to admit it, but we are. We're all trying. Um, so I did that and then I um, I worked in a production company as a researcher um, and production assistant. And basically my boss at the time were, just couldn't afford to hire a casting director on this project. Mm -hmm. So I ended up kind of doing everything on it. And I, I say that like it's almost like doing an art foundation where you get to try like a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh. I love this like I really really love this and it kind of was it was everything I wanted from from work it was really really creative it was working with people it was using my like acting and directing skills I'd had before um and it was it's really really visual too especially if you're working in you know in sort of like commercial and music projects mm -hmm. it there's and fashion it's all about look so it kind of like it matched up everything I wanted to do. Um, and then I had gone to uni with a director who's repped by Canada, the production company. And she kind of introduced me to Lane and I met them and I was like, cool, we're all on the same level. We were all really young. When we started it, I was 23. Wow. Just a bit lol to look back <laughs> on because guys, you make a lot of mistakes when you're this, that young and that's fine because I was like I know everything I'm so good at everything and then yeah there were some bumps in the road <laughs> but you know it's all part of the process really so I met Lane we got on really well and then I sort of was starting assisting them and then sort of took over and set up the UK company um, which has been a wild ride super fun and really exciting and now i've done loads of different jobs um from like really big music videos to uh the, every commercial <laughs> under the sun it feels like at this point we've been very very fortunate and mm -hmm. um, getting into doing a lot of narrative work big feature films and series and things like that so yeah it's all kind of happened really fast and i like sort of sat back the other day and i was like what, <laughs> what happened? but met lots of nice people along the way have a really amazing team now who you know couldn't do it without your your reflection of the people you surround yourself with to be honest so so yeah no it's that's a it's a small slice but wow, that is a delicious slice actually <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, Hannah has worked with kind of Nike. Um, she's worked with Dua Lipa, Little Sims. Like, she has literally done it all. So, Hannah, what would you say has been your favourite project that you've worked on? And that might be a tricky question. What would you say? 
Ooh, um, it's kind of a it's kind of a toss up between between a few. Um, this feature film that we're doing at the moment, which is all a bit like hushy, hush hush, but we'll be filming it later this year. That has been absolutely amazing because with narrative work, you really can take time to get to know people. Part of it, we were casting abroad, um, and you know that was really really tricky but really fun and it's going to be a beautiful piece of film um and this sam smith video we did recently which has just come out which is like the number one song in the world which is so funny because it's become like a TikTok hit which is so beyond me um that was amazing they wanted it to be like a celebration of queer people mm. and it's an amazing video and and we got to meet all the cast and recalls which is really rare for a music video quite often it's just like oh you know you just get submitted and you don't get to meet you in person mm -hmm. but everyone was so passionate and excited and so talented mm -hmm. like and it was just so much fun the whole process i mean it got a bit mad towards the end where it was like okay the scenes changed we're like having 20 more people and all of this stuff but it was it was a real joy to work on and it's yeah it came out last week and we were like it's amazing yes yeah. yeah. amazing wow it's, it's great it's really really good so i'm really happy because sometimes you get briefing and you're like oh i really hope it's amazing and it doesn't come out like you think it will but this just yeah. surpassed that so it was, it was great oh that's brilliant i love that yeah the video was absolutely fantastic so yeah major props to you guys for getting it right it was absolutely fantastic um okay cool so let's jump into the meat of our discussion today um for those of you who just joined um feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box say where you're from say what sort of creative you are and indeed if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the box but yes i want to get into castings um you know what are they how do they work why are they important give us the full kind of feel about them well it's really funny because a few weeks ago when we were at this award ceremony um anna stark who's an amazing casting director she was she was kind of emceeing the whole thing and she said that casting is so often the most like uncredited part of the production and un unappreciated which i'm sorry that sounds a bit moany but just from like a it's the only top line credit that doesn't have an oscar in film which is kind mm -hmm. of indicative of like oh my god you're ahead of a department and there's not there's not that like recognition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but casting casting is everything if you think of every everything you've watched which has people in right it's so distracting if they're not right <laughs> if you see a family cast and you're like um they're not they do not look related at right. all mm -hmm. or someone is sent to be from a certain cultural background and they've cast someone of a completely different race which obviously happens a lot some people think they can get away with it mm -hmm. and it's not okay but you know all of those things it's just so much is sat in casting and you're like it's all about that kind of decision making mm -hmm. and from the process for us on our side it's a really long process and it's you know it's from brief to us kind of dissecting the brief and sometimes you know picking apart whether we think that everything in the brief makes sense or we'd like to change it or we'd like to open it up we actually have quite a lot of say sometimes in going like do you really want that kind of person let's broaden our horizons why does it need to be this kind of person do you think that you can occupy space to have somebody who is different to what you wanted um which is super important because otherwise you're going to see the same people being cast over and over again um so yeah, so from putting the brief out to then kind of like selecting people, which is sometimes a lot. Like on some on one commercial project, we have ten thousand people apply. Wow. wow. So yeah, <laughs> so it's 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 really hard. And I think when people are like, oh, you know, do you watch every single person's show reel? It's not possible sometimes and frequently. Um, otherwise, we would literally have to have like three months to prep each job which I'd love, I'd have a lovely <laughs> life. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so we then pick everybody, ask them to table, meet them in person. Um, and 
yeah from there that's where it kind of gets filtered filtered down more and what mm -hmm. also happens a lot with casting is people are really unexpected so you can find like amazing talent where you would really not expect to and it's it's the best part of the job mm -hmm. genuinely being like oh my god you are great and like we want everyone to be good it looks mm -hmm. good on us it looks good for you do you know what i mean so it's not it's 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 tricky to pick people but um but when it works out it's just it's the most rewarding thing ever and it's so integral to every piece it's getting the right people in it because they're going to carry the script they're going to carry the performance they're going to have the energy they're going to wear your brand they're going to do whatever it's it's i personally think it's very important but i'm biased <laughs> Oh wow, that's so that's so interesting. I had no idea that you know casting directors would have influence on the actual end brief. That's so interesting. Um, you know, and and you know, one question that kind of came through um, from our creatives. Um, obviously, a lot of them get asked for self tapes um, and things like that. Um, so they were like what could we do to like improve our chances of like actually being selected at casting so i don't know if you have any like tips kind of any any kind of advice um around that um because obviously it can be a little frustrating to be requested to send in self tapes or attend castings and then not actually get selected so cool. is there anything that our creatives can do to kind of better their chances um send everything in on time that's a good one because I know it sounds like really 101, but if it's late, quite often we can't watch it because we have to send it. Mm -hmm. We'd love to give everybody like extensions and stuff. Obviously, if at the beginning you're like, I literally can't do this, can I have an extension? And we know in advance, we can usually try and make it work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, timing, which is boring, but a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Try and show your personality in, like usually we have a, like a tell us a little bit about yourself section we're always looking for somebody that we like that we like naturally want to get on with and if there's something different that you do if you have like an interesting hobby like once there was this 14 year old kid who i saw and he was like so grumpy and he was like mm, the whole time and i was like come on you must have some hobby and after like two minutes he told me he loved to crochet and i was like Whoa, i'm obsessed with you you're great and and that kind of like more human moment that you can put into something which is as boring as like a original slate in a self tape mm -hmm. um be well lit mm -hmm. don't have it's better to not have a background than to have sometimes people put like a sheet over like a clothes hanger and i'm like it just stand on your wall do you know what i mean like there's less going on there or you know anywhere that's like as you know least distracting as possible um that's just kind of like technical bits but mm -hmm. But yeah, just, just be yourself. And also, genuinely, I know this sounds like really patronizing. If you are from like a modeling background or if you're not an actor, if you have a casting for a commercial, be expected that you're gonna have to do some acting. I think I've had sometimes people have come in the room with a really weird attitude and they've genuinely said like, oh, do I have to act? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and it's, not, it, it's not that scary. And mm -hmm. even if, if it does feel that scary, maybe just tell your booker at the beginning that that's not something that you're comfortable doing because we really don't want you to be put in a position where you're not happy and if we're in the room we're like okay so this is the scene i see people's faces like oh, and it's like okay maybe this one isn't for you which is okay because there are plenty of projects that suit people with different skills you know um so so yeah just kind of like be prepared feel free to like ask questions as well, just to make sure that you feel comfortable because sometimes the briefs that we get from directors are a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. So we try and simplify them as much as possible. But if there's something you don't get, just like feel free to like email us and be like, just want to make sure that I've got it. Cause we, we want you to do the best you can. Yeah. Basically yeah oh such such good advice there thank you so much um that's really really great advice and i mean the other thing that we're really big here at contact about is making sure that your portfolio is up to date like i i don't know how much i can stress that to creatives um but that portfolio really is like that pre-interview if you like if you if you see the casting as kind of the interview stage then your portfolio is your pre-interview um and so yeah. it's really 
important that it, you know, that's looking as best as it possibly could because that is what, you know, a casting director is initially going to look at before they invite you in for a casting anyway. Um, super, super important to make sure that that's up to date. So, okay, now we're kind of prepared and ready for our casting. Um, when we kind of arrive at a casting, what are kind of your behavioral expectations of our creatives? Because we're, again, another thing we're super passionate about is pro being professional as creatives, you know, showing up on set and doing good work, right? Um, so yeah, what are your kind of behavioral expectations of creatives on, you know, on a casting day? I mean, just be nice. I know that sounds really simple, but I think be be humble mm -hmm. and kind and nice to people because in, I know this sounds really weird, but I think a lot of people feel that when they come into a room, they have to prove everything they've ever done. They have mm -hmm. to tell me every single thing they've been in and like all of their accolades and stuff. And that's cool, but I know it because I've picked you because I've looked at your stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, if you come in with that inner confidence and just be really nice and if, you know, if you're naturally funny, like be funny. If you're, you know, a bit quirky and odd, let us see that. Like we just want to get to know you at the end of the day. Um, yeah, don't don't be late. Don't be rude. Don't have an attitude. I think also the best thing to do is if, especially if you know that there's going to be like, a director there as well like don't piss them off <laughs> because we all we remember everybody and I, I know that sounds crazy but the reason that I can't remember like what I'm doing on Thursday evening is because my brain is an encyclopedia of everybody I've ever met in a casting and I you know I know people who are funny and I want to get them back in for other other things and I think that the way you come across plays such a big part if you're nervous tell us it's cool that is so natural if you're like oh my god i'm really sorry i've got like some nerves i need to shake out we're not going to be like screw you bye at oh. all we want we, you know we want to make you feel good so yeah just 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 be yourself and be and be nice and feel free to ask questions and also it does help to know what you're coming in for i know that sounds obvious but sometimes I've people being like what brand is this again or like um, that, mm -hmm. and guys, just read the brief, mm -hmm. know what you're doing, maybe look up some of the director's work because that actually really shows you quite often how they direct performance. Because okay. some, some directors really like these big reactions or people who are quite offbeat and, yes. you know, and you can play to that as well. It's all a game at the end of the day. Like you can make them want to choose you. Mm -hmm. Just because that happens, I didn't mean to, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think there's there's some really, really great advice in there. Um, you know, being yourself, um, you know, showing up um in a nice presentable manner, I think is 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 always a you know a win. Um because you really want to strike the balance between kind of hard skills and soft skills, right? So hard skills, do you know how to model? Do you know how to act? Yeah, those are the hard skills, but it's really the soft skills that you know will help to set you apart. And so professional them and showing up on time and all those sorts of things you know it's really really important that you know our creatives do get that right um when i was reading your bio also hannah i did notice and i you know i i squealed when i read this actually i think is the correct way to put it um because yeah it was definitely something that you know aligned with me so much um and you spoke about this idea of you know when it comes to selecting talent for you it's not about how much training they've had how much experience they've had who they've worked with before for you it's all about the raw talent and I would just love to hear more about that because I know that a lot of our creatives are discouraged because they're like, okay, my portfolio isn't the best, isn't the greatest thing. Like, how am I going to be able to stand out when there's so many more other options out there that are well experienced and all that sort of stuff? So, yeah, what do you have to say to a creative in feel in that spot? I guess that feeling a bit demotivated that they don't have the experience that um, may appeal to a casting director? Yeah, I think it it, it really depends on who you're approaching because some casting directors are really formal. 
really think that you have to have gone to WADA or Lambda or Central and done your acting training and then you move to this and then you get this kind of headshot and then you do that kind of work, do a few episodes of Doctors and then you're through. Yes. I think everything's changing now, mm. hooray, <laughs> because it's really limiting from for so many people of different backgrounds, right? Going to drama school and doing a traditional route is really expensive mm -hmm. and not an option for most people, to be honest. So it's limiting the pool already. Mm -hmm. um, I think don't be discouraged, but I think also be honest with yourself. I think if you, depending on what you're wanting to go into and what sort of castings you want to have, if you're going for more kind of editorial look based things and you've got like a really interesting look and your personality can kind of come through in sort of less acting based stuff brilliant you'll know if you've got that right do you know what i mean because people will already start kind of like looking for you and being interested in your work being a creative with multiple disciplines as well massively plays to your advantage because it's that whole kind of real people thing do you know what i mean everyone's a real person it's the most stupid thing in the world but it shows that you're like a multi-layered person and you're more interesting and we're going to want to get to know you more. There's something about where we're like, cool, that's really great. Um, and in terms of if you're, if you're wanting to get into acting, if you're wanting to get into performance or if you're wanting something else that you don't feel that you've got the, the background for, you, one, you need to be good. No matter what your training is, you do need to be good. And I think this is a really, really difficult thing where you know people are like follow your dreams do this i'm like yeah do but the industry is really hard and there needs to be a certain amount of realism if you think or if you can feel like in yourself that you are you've got a real talent for something or if other people have been like mate you're you're good you know run with it and go with it if you feel like you've been going and going and going and going and going and nothing has ever happened maybe it's not right for you and i'm just being completely honest because the worst thing is people are spending a lot of time and they could be doing something they really love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But also in terms of the portfolio thing, there's a lot of ways to just be able to show yourself mm -hmm. without having like the coolest pictures taken of you, like on film by the best photographer. Mm -hmm. As long as you've got stuff that is really clear where you can see yourself, or maybe like add a little intro video of you if you feel like your portfolio isn't showing enough or any previous work or or whatever i think mm -hmm. just like don't be try as try as hard as you can with what you've got until you've got something else and also try and pull favors from friends you'd be surprised that like if you're an interesting looking person dm some photographers they'll be like oh, God, i'd love to shoot you you've got a face like that's really exciting because you're helping each other out at the end of the day yeah. especially if it's like different creatives we can all like throw each other a bone sometimes you know yes yes oh my god i love that um i love collaborative creativity that's something i'm super big on um and about you know making opportunities for yourself rather than waiting for opportunities to come to you that is something that i preach all the time because i think it's so so important um as you're kind of developing and kind of building out your career um you said something very interesting there where you spoke about you know the industry is changing what kind of industry trends have you realized because i know that from our side of things we've definitely seen um and you know this was in line with one of the questions that were asked as well um you know we've definitely seen a greater demand for kind of mature models for example so what you know trends have you realized from the cast inside in terms of what the clients are kind of demanding from at the minute has there been any change since you've since you've started um are there any things that you know creatives should be aware of perhaps Mm, I mean, the trends, it's really interesting. Like the longer I've been doing this, the more I can see how these trends sort of ebb and flow. Um, everything's gotten a lot better since I started, not because of me, but just because of the world. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> when I started, these briefs were thin. They were, the descriptions for women were hilarious. There'd be like a description for like a cis male character, like this long, and then like one sentence, like mm -hmm. the girlfriend. You'd be like, mm -hmm. oh <laughs> really interesting. You know, these these things are shifting in the way that 
I mean, obviously people are becoming much more aware that like that's not acceptable to, to have that kind of crappy representation for people of like all different minorities, um, especially like tokenistically was caused quite a lot of, well, that was happening a lot, especially post BLM. There was a lot of very tokenistic representation, which was like, come on guys, like commit. Yeah. You know? Um, so I've seen more positive shifts happening. They're not there yet, obviously, mm -hmm. like we've still got a long way to go with certain things. Yeah. But I think in terms of other trends that have been coming in, yeah, you're right, like mature people, which is amazing because there's so much ageism. I was yeah. talking with the director yesterday about how there's actually a really weird um, playing gap for like people in their early 20s who can be like cool like student types. Mm -hmm. And then you're a mum, <laughs> and then there's there's nothing in between, mm -hmm. which is where I think having another creative outlet is really interesting because there's now more of a demand for real people who are doing real things, real mm -hmm. creative. Obviously, you guys are doing amazingly because it's like people want to be representing people with so many talents because that's cool. We're mm -hmm. moving away, I think now, not so much, but from influencers who are more kind of classic original like beauty influencers or YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Now I think people have this real want to see people with who are like painting or visual artists or dancers or people with kind of these different skills that they that they think are traditionally have always been cool. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of gap is 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 there at the moment so people are wanting that um in terms of other trends i think i think this more kind of personality led thing is coming through which i'm really really happy about because it means i get to meet such great people in the room yeah. i think now again being really honest there are so many people in the industry there are mm -hmm. so many talented people who are waiting to get in the door. So now people really remember if you've got a rude personality, if you're being strange or turning up late or whatever. So being nice and people wanting to repeat working with you and remembering you is hopefully a trend that sticks because it's really important and mm -hmm. it's great. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that. And I definitely concur. I've definitely seen a, a rise in the amount of what I call conscious creatives. So creatives that are about something, whether that be sustainability, whether mm. that be equality, um, I'm really seeing that come through. Um, so creatives, um, if that is something that you're passionate about, please shout about it. Please share about it. Um, because these are the things that will differentiate you and make you stand out. Um, so conscious of the time Hannah oh my god you've literally shared so much and I literally cannot wait to kind of listen to this back um, because I think you've dropped so many important gems uh, but to kind of round up then um, are there any kind of final tips that you might have outside of everything that we've kind of covered uh, today are there anything else that you would kind of advise um, to our creatives at all um I think just like keep doing what you're doing um just yeah it is it does feel especially when you're in like a bit of a rut and you're like oh i don't know if i'm gonna book a job or i don't know what's going on yeah. it will come just like keep up to date with new work that's coming out if you think somebody is an interesting director or you want to work with them or a casting director whose work you like and you think you'll fit in slide in send them an email you might not get a response, but it's usually not personal. Um, but yeah, like honestly, just just keep doing what you're doing and and it will be fine. And that sounds like really crap advice and I apologize. Um, but yeah, if you think you're really good, do it. If you're not sure, see what else is out there for you and circle back. And maybe it's just not your time right now, but it might be in the future absolutely absolutely i mean no that is the perfect advice really um and definitely always feel free to ask for help uh whether yeah. that be 
other creatives in your field, whether that be the contact team, i.e. me, uh, please feel free uh, to reach out anytime. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, and there's always more to learn. So always keep oh. yourself open and receptive. Go on, Hannah. One, one tiny thing. Don't trash the people around you. Lift everyone else up because yeah. you're not in competition with each other. There's too many jobs for you to get them all. Like, honestly, platform the other creatives around you because one, you'll make really good friends. Two, it gives back. And three, it's just a nice thing to do. Nice. Yes, perfect. Definitely. We we love love here. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, this has been such a great conversation. It went by so quickly. Um, no, we're just like blabbering it. <laughs> you shared so 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 many kind of tips and, and tools there. and i think you know even those listening i think they'll definitely will have picked up um a thing or two that will help them to improve their game which is what we we always wanted so thank you so much for your time hannah really really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy day um to come and, and chat with us um and i'm sure you know our creatives are super grateful as well so thank you very much um everybody for being here um yeah, thank oh, you yes yeah. <laughs> and thank you that's you've hosted amazingly like you had no need to be nervous so eloquent and brilliant thank you thank you so much thank you so much and i will definitely uh, catch up on, on email soon but yeah thank you so much everybody um and enjoy the rest of your day thank you see you later thank you so much guys bye bye, bye.